Love, it's what we're all searching for. But how many of us really know what it is? With Valentine's Day fast approaching, we here at Science Uncovered are delving into the latest findings to answer what is love and how we go about trying to obtain it. Love is one of the strongest emotions we are capable of achieving, but because of this it can cause a lot of heartache and pain. In fact, it seems that our world revolves around love, with it being the basis of many popular songs, movies and books. But love can come in many different forms. It can exist between parents and children, siblings, friends and of course partners. But did you know that love is actually the feeling we get when certain chemicals are released in the body? The most significant hormone being oxytocin, which plays an important role in the formation of social bonds. For this reason, it is quite often known as the cuddle hormone. Oxytocin is a small protein composed of nine amino acids. It is found in three places in humans, in the hypothalamus in the brain, the ovaries of women and the testes of men. Oxytocin is most well known for the influence it has in the creation of maternal care behaviour. Human survival relies upon successful reproduction and this means it is vital that mothers attach to and care for their offspring. When a woman is in labour, there is a drastic increase in oxytocin levels in the woman's body and brain, and this causes contractions of the uterus. After the baby is born, this hormone causes contraction of the milk glands, which helps the woman to breastfeed. This increase in oxytocin is essential for establishing the bond of love between mother and child. We now know what causes the bond of love between a mother and child, but what causes the attraction between potential partners? Attraction is said to be based on many factors, one being that we are attracted to those who show they have good genes for successful reproduction. Initially, men tend to focus on a woman's looks because evolutionarily speaking, they're looking for someone who can physically carry their babies. However, women tend to focus on the resources that men can bring. This may seem stereotypical, but it actually goes back to hunter-gatherer days, when a woman needed to find a man who could care for her and her offspring. But we are all here thanks to our ancestors choosing the strongest and best mates to reproduce with and to pass down their genes. There are a number of psychological theories about love, one of which argues that we are attracted to those who are similar to ourselves, whether this be based on physical features or personality. Another theory suggests that relationships are based on need fulfilment and gaining rewards. When it comes to love, one rather interesting fact is all about makeup. There are many iconic images of attractive women wearing brightly coloured lipstick. But were you aware that the reason red lips are considered so appealing is because it mimics the idea that a woman is ovulating. This is similar to our not so distant cousin, the baboon. When the female is in oestrus, her genitals redden, highlighting to males that she is fertile. In our own species, even though this is subconscious, when a woman wears red lipstick, it is supposedly a signal to men that she is ready for copulation. There are three stages of romantic love. Firstly, there's lust. This is driven by the sex hormones testosterone and oestrogen in both genders. The second stage of love is attraction. This is the love-struck phase, which is triggered by adrenaline, dopamine and serotonin. These neurotransmitters are responsible for activating your stress responses, whilst also giving you intense feelings of pleasure just by being in the same room as your love. In fact, it is serotonin that is the reason you can't get that crush out of your head. And last but not least, the attachment stage. This is where oxytocin, alongside the hormone vasopressin, cements long-term relationships between partners. So it's the attachment stage of love which keeps people together for a long time. But do you think it's natural for humans to be in monogamous relationships? Or do you think that we should have multiple partners throughout our lives? 
We actually went to an event at the Brighton Science Festival which answered many of these questions. We're here at the Science of Sex event at the Salis Benny Theatre in Brighton where we are covering the lecture Is Cheating Inevitable? by Dr Meg Barker who talked to us about her views on what is love. I think most people, when they're talking about love, they probably assume it means romantic love, and that's what I've been talking about today at the Brighton Science of Sex um, event. They think that um, romantic love is what we're all about, and we're about finding a romantic love a relationship that's going to be the one relationship, the perfect relationship that's going to complete us. And actually, my worry about that as a relationship therapist and also as an academic is it puts relationships under a huge amount of pressure. I think that it isn't inevitable. I think it's hard to cheat at the beginning bit because they're all you're kind of thinking about. I think that you will always desire other people even if you're in a monogamous relationship. I think monogamy is hard and I think anyone who doesn't think that monogamy is hard therefore is prone to cheat. And if there are problems in the relationship then you may naturally seek comfort from someone else. I think that saying that is an is inevitable is a kind of a, uh, a scapegoat for people. An alternative is to maybe think about love much more broadly, expand out our understanding, so we think about all the relationships in our lives as being important. Those with partners, even if we have one or more partners, but also friends, neighbours, colleagues, also our relationships with companion animals, with ourselves, with the world around us. You know, all of these relationships are important. And if we expand out our understanding of love to include them all, then we're not going to put a one relationship under so much pressure that we maybe break it. I personally think that love is a feeling of loving someone more than you love yourself. I think being in love or feeling love is a feeling of just ultimate happiness. So when you're in love with someone, nothing else matters. I think it's when you feel the capacity to completely give yourself to someone else. And I think it just has just amazing power to do wonderful things, but I'm an old romantic, so yeah. I also particularly like um, the word polysaturated, or having too many partners. <laughs> Do you want to know how to fall in love? York psychologist Professor Arthur Aaron has devised three easy steps which will guarantee you love success. First, you need to find a complete stranger. Then reveal to each other intimate details about your lives for half an hour. Then, finally, stare deeply into each other's eyes without talking for four minutes. He asked his subjects to carry out the above three steps and found that many of these couples felt deeply attracted to each other after the 34 minute experiment. In fact, two of his subjects later got married. So could love really just be the result of a chemical reaction? It seems strange to think that the love we feel for our families and the love we feel for our partners is caused by the same hormones. And if this is all that really matters, could we feel love for someone we've only just met as strongly as we feel about people we have known for years? So many questions, so little time. However you feel about love, we wish you a very happy Valentine's Day and lots of love in the future. Thank you for watching. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. What is love? What is love?